Hi there. Thank you so much for being prepared to watch the replay of the live stream that aired on Sunday afternoon, the 4th of June. I had to download it. That means the chat has been removed. You will only hear my side of the conversation. Julian's son was present. He saw the notification on Instagram. I'm going to keep it short, but I want to put this clip out before. If you choose to continue watching what happened with my cat Leo Siamese doll Kiwi, thank you so very, very much. The only way I can explain what happened is that YouTube ghosted me. My settings were the same, everything was the same. Also, my whole picture image orientation, the screen was locked. I could not unlock it once I had gone live. My screen locked, so the orientation was vertical as opposed to horizontal. The whole thing was shambles. I was and still am gutted. But I thought, let me upload it and let me see if this is of any help to anybody to see a Cattleya orchid that has, for the most part, 95% dead roots. We're going to try and revive it. This is the way I can always refer back to or show footage of the root system and follow the progress of this orchid. Anyway, YouTube is doing a number. I can't explain it in any other way except that. My claim to fame is YouTube ghosted me. Thank you so much if you choose to watch the replay of the stream. I appreciate your support. And we will have another live stream. And we will try again. And we'll see what happens then. I've just seen a concerning chat post by Orchid Ninja Julian S. Sun. And it is true, my controlling device didn't show that I had scheduled a live either, which is super, super annoying. It is incredible. So I'm just going to go to my other device and see if I can even see whether I'm live or not. Incredible. Because if this is not working properly, I mean, I can see Julian's comment right here, but I don't even see my live anywhere to follow chat. Sorry for this little hiccup right at the beginning. I will try to find this timestamp afterwards so you can skip the issues that are currently occurring. Very, very annoying, especially when you take the time to do something. You make sure you do it right and then nothing. So I, at the moment, I'm only seeing Julian's comment. Yes, I can see that I'm live. But whether anybody else will know that I'm here, I have no idea. I'm going to go to the general tab on the YouTube thing and look for lives. I probably won't factor in there at all. This is super duper upsetting. I'm getting notifications of other people going live. So why is this happening to my stream? Let me just wave in front of the camera. Right now I've been live for 2 minutes 32, but it's not appearing at all. Incredible. Here comes another chat. Okay, let me read this. It doesn't even appear in the live tab. I know. I can see it. Hey, it's good to see you. I can't read your name at the moment because I don't see the chat. I don't see the live stream. I don't see anything with my second device the way I normally do. That is crazy. I don't want to rotate my device, but my screen is also a little bit more black than it normally is. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to tell you. I'm floored. I'm absolutely floored. I can't always go by, oh, it's a YouTube glitch, blah, blah, blah. I don't always want to be saying that, but I can't explain it any other way. It's not showing anywhere at all. And I wish it would because at least then I could see the comments and say, welcome everybody. So I'm going to do this on the fly then. Thank you for being here. I can see at least Julian is here and oh my goodness. I don't know. I don't understand YouTube. I really, really don't. You think you've got it worked out. Julian, I can barely see the comments, but can you tell me if you can see my orchid, if you, everything is in screen, if you can hear me properly? Because with that, I'm just going to go ahead and proceed because Catlia Siamese doll kiwi needs to be repotted ASAP. It's growing roots. It's a struggling orchid. I want to get this done. So I'm going to just wait to hear that feedback and then we'll just go and proceed. This is crazy. This is upsetting. This hurts my feelings. It is a YouTube glitch. I don't... <laughs> Julian, it's good to see you. It really is. Thank you so much. I know that some other people, they were waiting for my live today, but if they are not getting a notification, if they can't see anything going on, I can't see it even on my own channel. I can see it in my studio because it came up as upcoming event in the background. I, that's where I could see it. 
but none of my backup devices where I was following chat. Nope. There's nothing here. There's absolutely nothing here. Nothing saying that I'm live anyway. Oh my goodness. This orchid needs to be repotted C or C. So we'll just go ahead with that because she is not looking good. She has all the hallmarks of dehydration. So the root system, in my opinion, in there is shot. She's also showing signs of, well, you could say too much light. This is sufficient light. Just these little freckles, because she does have spotting in her blooms. But this here, this anthocyanin, this is, mm. yeah, this orchid has got issues. But as she is growing new roots, it is a good time to go in. I've been waiting for this. It's probably a little bit difficult to see. And I may even be out of focus because I can't really see my screen. So why is my screen locked suddenly? I don't want to rotate my device. Anyway, we'll try. So right here, there's a root tip right in there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take her out. I may not even cut off all the dead roots. I'm anticipating, anticipating a lot of dead roots. But what I did was use the Bactafil that I'm testing for the time being, and I soaked her in that at 160 parts per million, also because it is supposedly preventative for Fusarium and anything like that. So if this is what could be happening as an underlying issue, then at least we've already soaked her in something as a preventative. So make sure that I'm going to tip away from the root tips. Of course, this one lecker bead right here is already attached. Let me get rid of this one right here. Try to protect at least the two roots that I can see. Otherwise, this orchid is history. Bifoliates have hardly any storage organs, and for that reason, they are super, super difficult to recover once they go into decline. When I say storage organs, I mean like the pseudobulbs. You can see how desiccated my pseudobulbs are as well. It's all looking very, very bad for her. The thing is, with bifoliates, the pseudobulbs are usually thinner. So no matter how many pseudobulbs an orchid like this has, the fact they're not fat and chubby, there's not much sus sustenance in them. So I wasn't expecting too much of a headache here. Uh, come on, you're not alive, so you can come off. Right, that is not looking good at all. Icky do, that to me is an orchid that is in stress, complete stress. If you don't see it through the leaves, the fact that the pot is pretty much mush, <laughs> that'll tell you. We've got huge problems with Siamese doll kiwi. Big problems. It's obvious. Doesn't take a rocket scientist or even someone who doesn't grow orchids to know that there's huge problems with this orchid. And should I cut into the rhizome or not? It's something I was contemplating, but I'm not going to because I need every single storage organ on this or orchid right now. I can't be cutting off anything that would be <laughs> serving a purpose long term. This orchid started to stop having two leads, active leads with what I had in 2021. 2020, she had two active leads. 2021, only one active lead. And since then, only one active lead, which is right here. And you can see that the other lead has pretty much stopped functioning altogether. There is an eye, it's trying, but this is telling me that this orchid has the F-bomb, in my opinion. Whether I cut into the rhizome or not, the back part here, this part I think has sincere issues. Very big issues. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands again, and then I'm going to bring you down for a closer look. And thank you for being here. Whoever finds this live stream by chance, off chance, 
I know that Carmen was looking forward to it and she's probably thinking I'm not doing a live stream because again, it's like there's a big blank everywhere. Blankety blank. Yeah, Julian, it's just you and me, sir. <laughs> for as long as you can handle the situation. <laughs> it's going to get a bit jiggly for a moment. Let me get you down. We don't have to be shy because it's just the two of us. <laughs> I'm not saying this could be a quick live stream, but I can assure you that this root system is not going to need a lot of work. I'm just going to also rinse down my support, something I didn't think I was going to put back in, but clearly seeing what I'm seeing, what we're seeing here, <laughs> this orchid is going to need some support. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's go to the choppity chop. Very, very sad. I was so looking forward to this afternoon. Okay, so this root feels firm. We're going to leave that. And we're going to be a little bit, well, it is so tempting to go up to the base and everything, but I'm going to be conservative and only take, let's say, 30% of the old root system off for no other reason, but maybe a little bit of anchoring will help out. I did bring a bin tub for my debris here. So why not use that, make my life afterwards a little bit more easy. So we've lost that. Now, why did it come to this point? In my opinion, mistake numero uno on my part, during the winter, I kept the leka too wet. And that doesn't mean just this past winter, but the issue started the previous winter. The first winter I wasn't heating the growth space and the first winter I wasn't using any kind of supplemental lights. So that is where I believe the decline started. Seeing as I'd only just repotted her, I wasn't concerned about aeration, the lack thereof in the pot because I'd just done a repot on her in 2020. I believe it was 2020. So the winter, the two winters following, you know, I just thought I'm going to, I'm just going to leave her alone and watch her and see what she does. Well, clearly I like to repot, let's say every two years, maximum three years, depending on how vigorous of a root grower an orchid is. That is when I will repot every two years. Sometimes I just up pot. But in her case, being a bifoliate, I'm always a little bit more conservative about messing around with bi bifoliates. And I do it as little as possible. Sorry, this, I just have a thing with dirty hands, especially on camera. So the decline started because cold temperatures, wet, the roots were too wet. She has had no pest issues. That's not the reason behind this. And obviously a full year in the pot as is waiting for new roots to grow leaving her be waiting out the second winter keeping her on the little drier side which i know is a an oxymoron in leka and self-watering but um, i wasn't as actively watering this past winter as i did in 2021 so here we are this is what i believe happened here if because of getting weaker and weaker, there was fusarium in the orchid that wasn't active, let's just say, during the years that she was doing well in my care. That means that as she weakened, the virus could take over. So I wasn't surprised that she didn't want to do two leads of growth in 2022 because of the lack of light in the winter of 2021. I hope I'm making sense with my timeline here. I hope it is, you know, it makes sense and is helpful. But um, I wasn't concerned about that at all. So I could also say now she's in a similar situation, didn't have enough light during the next following winter and still only has one active lead. But the difference is that this year, her structures are showing signs of desiccation. Last year, she didn't have that. So clearly she is not strong enough to be able to, I'm sure, make sure you're still in sh shot there. She's not strong enough to be able 
to push out a second lead. My diagnosis for Fusarium is in the second year now seeing a blackening eye. Sorry about the scooter. The blackening eye is concerning because that is not because of water. Definitely not because I've been extremely careful with this orchid. Seeing that I could see signs of uh, decline, there was no misting around the base at all. That blackening eye is concerning. The fact that the roots at this side are looking nice and they're not getting any blackening spots, hmm, gives me the feeling that this is an isolated case. But, and she's trying to branch down here, so we'll be mindful of that. This is an isolated area where maybe something has activated and it's only gonna be either a matter of time before she completely collapses or grows out of it because of this new product that I'm trying out. We'll take out the middle part in a little bit more of a generous way. And any stragglers and strands that just really freak me out because they look so bad. So we'll take that off. That appears to be an okay root reaching for the sky over here. Or is it, are you just teasing? Yeah, just a tease. So we can take that away. There's a bit of mold right by the root tip there from an old root. So we'll go in carefully. That, that one lecker bead is attached. So we'll take it off there. And we have a little bit of a curly whirly thing going on here that we can take off and get rid of. This one is also not looking like it needs to stay. Yeah, I want you gone. I want that root tip at the edge to be free to move without anything touching it that could be acidic. Let's just get rid of some of the natural fertilizer right here. <laughs> and let's go in here. What is going on down here? What's this? Well, we'll just take that off and see where it comes off. What a bummer. What a bummer. Okay. Maybe if I just spray her down. It's available on the live playlist, last of the list. It's available now. And you killed your Siamese doll kiwi. Okay, so I'm seeing the chat on the screen. So that's where it's available now. Dang. I wonder if we could share the link somewhere. I'm not leaving the patio now. I'm not gonna go and do any troubleshooting. I'm tempted, but it's not happening. You're here and we shall the show must go on. <laughs> it just, it's just insane. I don't understand how this works. Today I was watching programs about artificial intelligence and I'm like, okay, it's a threat. I get it, but it's only a threat if it doesn't work. <laughs> In a couple of months, maybe it'll, it'll be a threat because it's going to get smarter than us. And then we've got a problem because we can't control it. But right now it seems like whatever AI is operating in the European realms, <clears throat> I must say, I'm questioning the intelligence part of it. So annoying, but at least it's showing. Well, that's a great step in the direction. Thanks for the feedback, Julian. I so appreciate it. You have no idea. Ah, oh, goodness me. Because I was thinking today, ah, I'm going to have to wean myself off of live streams when the summer is over and then go sit in the dark again, which is always a bummer. Because I'm quite enjoying this, to be honest. Yesterday I thought, should I even do a live? Oh, don't tell me I kinked this. I kinked a root. Oh, boo. It's a branch. We'll leave it. We'll see what it does. Last year, yes, not last year, yesterday I was actually thinking, should I do a live stream or shouldn't I? Because I was thinking, you know, Sunday afternoons, it's probably asking a bit too much from people. 
Sunday mornings, people go to church and do stuff. I was thinking maybe moving them to Saturday. And then I thought, well, the noise pollution, even though now a truck is going by, the noise pollution is even worse on a Saturday afternoon. So here's me just saying that one part right there when a truck drove by. It was quite peaceful up until now. So I will just wait for some feedback. We still have some months to go. If Saturday works better, then I can always move it. I don't want people to feel they would like to join but can't because they're at church. That's not fair. And then, of course, there's the other side of the spectrum. Australia is going to sleep, which is, you know, can't be helped if you're kind of stuck in the middle. And I still want, I still want Kerala. <laughs> I want to be around for Kerala, India. Still keep thinking of Jose or Joseph. Okay. Now you would assume, ah, oh, take off all the roots. No. All the dead roots. No, no, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. If something were to happen, it's already happened. There's no need to put on more pressure by the abrasions. But if I can get rid of some of the fern roots, that would be great. These fern roots are a nuisance, even though the plant has been killed off a long time ago. <laughs> They're pretty, but they can also be a nuisance just because of the base. Now, that's not why the eye went black, because I haven't had ferns around this part of the orchid or at the base of this orchid since fall of 2022. That's when I do my weeding in fall of usually in the fall before they have to come inside. That's it. I got myself some lecker to clean. Oh boy. Find a great podcast. Yeah, so anyway, I was watching AI. Saturdays are busier for you. You see, I would have thought so as well. I would have thought so as well. I just find that, yeah, a lot of people are out, out and about on Saturdays. I'm not going to, I would rather not switch because it's also easier for me on a Sunday. But, you know, as they say when it comes to YouTube, it's not about you. It's about everybody else. So I think if we find a happy medium with our Sundays, I'm happy to accommodate an Orchid Ninja as a priority all the time every time by the way i saw notifications uh julian you sent me more pictures on instagram so i'm sorry i haven't gotten around to that today was one of those days and yesterday evening when i think it was last night you brought them through i was just starting to wind down and i knew if i started to get to chatting i wouldn't go to bed anytime soon so i don't like the look of these when they were in the pot. I don't like these nasty things sticking out, reminding me. I see the leaves. That's all I need to know. Methinks we're good to go. Here's another one. Just dried out. Two roots. Julian, did your Siamese doll... Oh, I see three. Okay. Three roots. <laughs> How was your Siamese doll kiwi on the root front? Was she happy? Was she... A diva because even the history of the orchid here shows me the back growth maybe three roots as well and then branching which is great that's good to see I like to assess a root system to know where I'm at so if I've got three roots again at least it's behaving normally and then that'll branch so that's what we're going to be potting up not really much to go on here but there's hope in the front and by the way yes i will not let this orchid bloom if she decides to push buds <laughs> we're going to be nipping them in the bud so no siamese doll kiwi if she decides to bloom so i have prepared of course my station here let me raise you up a tad i see Two folks in the chat now. Well, two watching. Yeah. All I can say is thanks, YouTube. I'm really, really trying to work with your algorithm. I'm really trying. 
You're making it very, very difficult. I don't understand why it has to be so complicated. Or maybe I'm not smart enough for this. There we go. Okay. That's my clean tray. My support will also clean the tag a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's rinse that off. Get some of the nasty off. Oh, goody. I just sprayed the chair I might sit in. <laughs> it's all kicking off here right now. Okie dokie. Let's put this down. Right. Pot. I'm going to put her in the same size pot. And just not go to the kitchen to wash one. We're just going to use that back to fill that is in there and top her off with some water. There we go. This back to fill smells like my seaweed from like kelp max seaweed, not the new stuff. That really smells like the ocean, but it smells like, yeah, the seaweed I used to use. It's really strange. Okay, now another thing I have to get actually, just one second, is my rag. Da, 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 da. It's over yonder by the Angrequoids. <laughs> I was weeding Cousin It today. The maiden hair fern was growing, and as pretty as it is, I don't want the level underneath to get covered by maiden hair fern. I need light there because I want some new growths to fill in that area. And I have a couple that I don't want to have drowned out by maidenhair fern. Okay, now we have large lecum, just for the sake of crocking, which I am just gonna fill in by hand. <clears throat> we don't want this. I'm just trying to get rid of fern roots. Let me do that. Yeah, so I'm just going to put down large lecker at the base to fill the pot. I don't want to be buying another bag just to accommodate and get small lecker. So I figured that I won't be left with a big root system. It's amazing how you just look at the leaves and then, of course, you hope you're wrong, you know? Oh, the leaves look desiccated. Yep, that's a sure sign there's a problem in the root system. And then you like unpot the orchid and go, oh, I was wrong. <laughs> Meanwhile, I wasn't wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. But anyway, that's why I prepared some large lecker. Now we are going to find our support. And there we go. Let me just check with the orchid herself because if I need to fandangle that support into the middle, I will. Well, seeing as she doesn't have any inclination of growing at the back, I am pushing her back. The idea being she's going to recover and then we don't have to do this again. And if I have to do this again, that means this lead is activated. So happy days. Now there's something cute down there. It's bright. It's got this gorgeous spring color. Could be an eye. I've been watching that for a couple of weeks now. It's not on the move, but even if that one grows, it's still got plenty of room in the pot. And I think if I'm going to have to tie her, that's going to be just fine right here. I already did before this live stream, I already did the alcohol treatment around the base, made sure that there was no pests or anything going to make their home down there because I don't need to do that now, seeing as I'm getting her completely wet, whatever I did earlier, at least if there was some attack happening that I couldn't see. I wanted to nip that in the bud as well because whoop, she's a great candidate for pest issues. I just got to get that lecker bead because Monsieur King doesn't know the difference between lecker and kibble. <laughs> He'll probably think that the hard stuff is just stone age kibble. <laughs> okay, let me just fill up this side. Let me check and see comment here if there's anything and then I'm she arrived with barely any live roots oh goodness me yeah that's tough with a bifoliate and then I made the mistake to keep them on the dry side waiting for new shoot to bake the roots 
before repotting it never pushed any yep Oh, it's always risky to get a bifoliate in the mail. Always risky. You never know. It's always risky to get any orchid in the mail, but I'm telling you when you come when you get a bifoliate that looks ill or has no roots, should that ever happen again, I have mentioned that in some videos, I wouldn't repot an orchid even though she comes in nasty media, even though the roots appear to be dead. It's not going to make any difference. For some reason, if an orchid's gonna go downhill, it won't be because you didn't repot. It will be because the repot, not you specifically, but in general, Julian, but it will be her downfall if she gets repotted. I had two or three like that at the beginning and I was so cross with myself. This collection being the first collection that I've actually gathered via the internet, <clears throat> excluding the complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, of course, because before everything was sourced either by cuttings, divisions, or something like that from people in my past that had a few orchids. It wasn't all just Phalaenopsis. But when I started this collection, oh, the age of the internet. <laughs> and I was just thinking, oh, I'm going to get great orchids. Oh, boy, did I learn quickly that that is just... Well, it was a figment of my imagination, if I ever had one. Incredible. Shocker. Let me see. She came from Orchid Garden. That's where I got her. That's what it says on the tag. So I guess I got lucky with her because, let me tell you something, back in those days, I didn't wait to repot. I didn't wait for new roots. I knew what I wanted to do with my collection. And as I had time, because they were coming in very, very quickly, the boxes, as I had time, I went about my business and did all the repotting. But then I was also working with heat mats, extra lights, heating the space. So all that kind of helped as well. I wouldn't dream of doing that now. No way. I mean, my pulchra was in that nursery pot for, well, since July of 21. Almost two years, didn't touch my pulchra, which also gave me a great opportunity to figure out how does she grow her roots. I was hoping that having her in a pot where there was water or nutrients at the base would encourage her to grow the roots down towards the pot. Nope, didn't happen. So there we go. A ver. Of course, we're going to need more around in and around not really you know what not really the inclination now is to fill the pot but why there are no live roots for aesthetic reasons that's an option but i'm not having to respect what is in the pot as live roots because there are none in the pot well in the front but they're all covered those roots are all covered so this is not so bad i'm going to just poke around in the pot get leka away from the base so that there's air in the back right here you can see that just want to make sure that there's a root right here that had some sign of life on it. So I'm going to cover this one a little bit. The hollow down here, I'm not concerned about. I've got a little bit of a gap right here. Not bothered about that, don't need to fill that. We'll just reestablish some of the status quo of wet, let's say when I do put a microfiber or something and I miss the microfiber at least the damp will protect the root that's right here. Because this one, even though it's all the way nasty over here, this one <laughs> has a bit of life to it. Maybe not for long now that we've messed with her, but it had to happen. Because now when I'm flushing, I'm not just distributing and flushing debris out of her. Because that was another thing that was a little bit alarming when I was flushing her with plain water, even though I hadn't used brown fertilizer, I just used proper fertilizer, you know, 
<laughs> when I flushed her, all this stuff came out of the bottom. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're not doing well. So many little signals and they all came and accumulated to this. Now, I'm just going to tip out this part of my mask. Let's see, the Benjamini Ficus in the back always appreciates a little bit of that. Now we're just going to flush out what's left of the bit of debris and I'm going to fill the reservoir with my back to fill product again because I'm, I'm, I'm super interested to see how this works. The back to fill I bought, I think it was because of the Fusarium possibility, not that I had any when my collection arrived, but I was googling back in the day about Fusarium and what is available in Europe. Meanwhile, I did have Fisan, but if you're supposed to alternate certain products, then I thought maybe that would apply to the Fusarium as well. So I got back to fill. I never used it. It's a powder <laughs> and I have to stab it with a knife <laughs> to, to dislodge the quantity I need. Does my orchid need to be tied? Not really. We're going to do it anyway. We are going to do it any way. You never know. We haven't had those strong, strong summer winds that I'm so used to. Oh, but news flash, news flash. Today I found a third spike on my Stanhopia. Because <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, okay, fine. You see, she's lifting herself out of the pot. That means whatever is on the top is way higher than what's coming out at the bottom of the basket. And I was just thinking I'm getting the same situation again that I had when I thought Lava Rock was a great idea to disperse and weigh the pot down that she was in initially. So I thought, yeah, we're not going to see many blooms out of this one. I mean, three spikes is nothing for the size of the orchid. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's a fantastic blooming. It's not going to be. But the blooms we're going to get, it's just increased by a little bit because we've just, another spike has emerged at the bottom where they're supposed to be, not scrunched up, growing towards the basket. But it's very surprising to see the spikes that are developing because they're coming from leads that, in my opinion, are way too immature. So we might get one bloom <laughs> per spike. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> better than nothing, right? Or a Siamese doll kiwi is not going to have any blooms <laughs> at all. So, I'm going to get my other device out and see what that looks like now. Just one second, because I am a little bit curious by what you said. It took all of what, maybe 15 minutes for something to appear. I've got nothing. I don't see anything. I've got nothing. I can't see myself. Can you believe it? I see diddly squat on my channel. She is done. I want to say that I so appreciate your patience with me. Talk about lead balloon effect, huh? Man, man, man. This is terrible. Anyway, I don't want to go on and on about my woes with YouTube, but it is certainly, you just want to run around the patio and go, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Julian, I have appreciated your company. I'm kind of feeling guilty now that you didn't have any other chatters with you. You saw me do what I do, kept me company. You helped me troubleshoot in the background. I owe you big time. <laughs> I owe you big time. I am not in control of this system. I'm trying to figure it out to the best of my ability. But uh, yeah, anyway, listen, I'm going to love and leave you. I'm going to say thank you so, so much. Honestly, that you were here, that you're showing me what was going on in the background while I was blind. I'm going to wish you a fabulous Sunday. And if anybody, anybody watched this on replay, let me say I'm sorry for whatever happened. But if you did watch the replay, thank you so much for taking the time. Fingers crossed that Siamese doll kiwi will stick around. We won't see any blooms this year, but as long as the orchid lives, that to me is the most important. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday once again. Thank you so much for being here. I owe you <laughs> big time. I owe everybody that watched this live back also big time. Sorry for the technical issues. Have yourself a great rest of your Sunday on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.